inside of ATEC 1.202, which is the the game lab. The game lab. Yeah, next to the restroom. So <laughs> next to the restroom. Yeah, it's okay. the easiest way to keep track of it. Um, but yeah, the, it's a it's a huge ordeal. We um, have done this several times. This is the second time we've done it officially as the game dev uh, weekend. But um, I've taught a couple classes before and, and taken a class before where we had um, you know this really awesome experience of you know getting students who don't normally get to get together and put things together and just providing that experience for them. We get uh, last time we had about 60 students over the course of the 72 or so hours that we actually developed the game. Um, all participating, all contributing. Not all of them had, you know, were from the ATEC program. A lot of them were, you know, we had some CS students stop by. We had, um, you know, some some lit majors. We had uh, also people from the industry come by and give some talks and things. So like that. how did you? Why did? How did it start? What was its original? Well, um, purpose. <clears throat> when I when I first started school here, um, the, uh, we had a, an instructor um, who's actually a really notable game designer named Tom Hall, mm -hmm. and he's. Uh, an industry veteran, he was uh, one of the original Ion Storm guys, one of the original Id guys, um, and just really knows his stuff. Um, he was like the lead designer uh, on a game called Anachronox and has helped a lot with it. Um, anyways, somehow uh, Tom Linehan suckered him into coming in and, and teaching for us. And, Tom uh, being the director of ATEC. Yes. Absolutely. And very good at getting people suckered in. Yes, he's, he's an amazing sufferer. So uh, <laughs> I got suckered by Tom. Anybody else here? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, he uh, got talked this guy into coming in, and, and we had a really good time. And but I, one of the things that he noticed that uh, you know, no matter how much he talked in class, what people really wanted it was mainly focused around design. So a lot of writing, a lot of like concept and things like that. But one thing that he noticed that constantly kept being asked was, you know, okay, how do we make games? How do we make games? How do we make games? And so what he decided was to just basically put together um, the toolkit for this small um, um, sort of casual game company that he had started up called Monkey Stone. They had this engine that they'd been developing. So he just brought this little simple 2D sprite based game in and um, had the students kind of prepare for it. They had to learn a little bit of scripting and things like that and then just turned them loose and we put together um, uh, you know, a game. It wasn't very fun, it wasn't very polished, but we, you know, uh, it's called like Dainty Spatula and the Watermelons. So this would have been like years. what, three, four years ago? This was back in 2002. Yeah. Okay. So basically the first semester we had moved into the ATEC building. Right. <laughs> so, um, but it's, uh, it was, you know, a really fun experience and, and from then on, like, that's where I was like, you know what, this is the way students should learn. Um, by practicing what they're learning in class and actually getting a chance to go out and physically produce it. The, the thing I didn't like about it is I didn't get to use a lot of the other skills that I had learned, like, you know, I was doing some 3D modeling and texturing and things like that at the time, and, um, you know, mainly I spent a lot of time in Photoshop, which I didn't like, and, uh, you know, it's it's a great program, but it's just not what I was interested in learning. You want to create, you don't want to sit behind and be a pixel pusher all the time. Right, right, exactly. Not so there's anything wrong with being a pixel no, pusher. No, no, but we aspire to greater things. Yeah. To, to in addition to. Exactly. <laughs> Being so the pixel pushers are on the, <laughs> the low end of the totem pole. Yeah. Sorry, pixel pushers, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I got the opportunity to teach that same class um, a little while later, and, and you know, learning my lesson of uh, you know what students really want, I decided you know we go ahead and create a mod for the Unreal Tournament 2004, um, and lo and behold, the students loved it. It was one of the most uh, Interesting games or interesting experiences they had. Um, so that's that's what we did. We, I, you know, from there, I, I didn't get an opportunity to teach again until last semester, and I just decided that, um, you know, we have this Art and Technology Student Association, which is there to kind of promote togetherness and, and right. learning and having fun and, and bonding and also getting better at your skills and all that sort of stuff. So I figured, what better way to to, to really promote like level design, which is what I'm teaching now, than actually having all these students get together, build levels, build art assets, all this sort of stuff, all to make an actual game. And so they get real production experience, you know. Is that the goal of the weekend though, is to come out with a game at the end of the 72 hours? Yeah, that's, the hope is to come up with like an actual full mod. So, so there's like designations of like, you know, how much of a modification you're making, but you know, we basically strip out most everything we can and, and try to create all the art assets our own and things like that and have it actually work. Do, uh, is it, obviously gamers are more attracted to it, but you mentioned computer science and some mm -hmm. other 
uh, people of interest, can an average person show up, not necessarily to participate, like script or, but could participate perhaps in another way, either through yeah, I mean, that, and that's writing, that's the beauty, yeah. artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the, the production process is a large and varied process. So you start you know, from the very beginning of, you know, we, have, we need guys that actually concept, that sit there and, you know, they come up with the game design and they actually write it up and it's a physical document. And then from there we go to concept artists who start drawing up characters for us, who start giving us, you know, ideas on colors and palettes and things like that. Um, then we move on to the actual 3D artists who are actually, you know, taking those 2D images and bringing them sort of into the third dimension. Um, and then you start bringing them, once that happens, all the other guys start getting involved. You've got programmers, you've got um, level designers, you've got texture artists, lighters, and it's, it's the whole big production and it requires everyone. We don't, like, anyone is able to participate. We actually have um, some tutorial sessions, like, uh, the Thursday night before we actually start um, to kind of help ramp people up. If they haven't had any experience, they can come in and, and sort of get like a, you know, a feel for what's going on, and, and they can participate to whatever level they want. To. Is there a uh, a cost for anybody to attend, or N no? We don't in actuality, and we're not really limiting it to UTD students anymore. I don't think that was our initial limitation last time, but I think now we're <clears throat> we're actually opening it up, and we're going to have um, some students from Collin County. Um, they're taking courses down there. Um, I think the the guys from M Guild who are um, like a, a portion of the a bunch of short guys are actually going to show up too. So we're going to have right, uh, a lot of uh, different people. Uh, there's going to be some industry people coming in. and, and Good. So you actually have the makings of something that could really become the new South by Southwest. That's yes. what we're hoping, yeah. Except, you know, for games. For games. Well, I mean, South by Southwest started off as an interactive thing and it had another weekend with music. Mm -hmm. Years ago when I would go to it, you could walk and talk and meet people and have fun. And now, of course, it's like, in the summer. Yeah. And Robert Rodriguez is speaking there this time. And the Who is rumored to play there this time. Oh, that's on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> but I mean, that's the kind of thing. I mean, these things start small and they mushroom into bigger yes. things. Well, that's that's the hope to you know bring some notoriety, but you know also to really we want to get students some production experience um, because that's the biggest thing. They don't know what they're they're heading into when they when they get into these industry experiences. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of crunching, it's a lot of uh, pain, and it, it helps them to kind of get an idea of what it is. So, Steve, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about like what happened last semester during the game? Um, not to cut you off, but well, that's fine. Uh, no. Yeah, feel well, free to jump in. But yeah, it's like, not, so it's not a one, two, three. So, you know, like, I know all of us were involved in the last one, um, even some of the guys behind the, the camera that are laying down. Um, Taking it easy. Haven't you gotten the food yet? <laughs> so, but no, let's so, water here. Didn't get the memo. Yeah, you know, memo from the president. How how was last last time? Uh, pretty successful. What was the game like? Yeah, uh, last year was phenomenally successful. Uh, like Tony said, we had about sixty people in total. There was a uh, twenty hardcore people that were there almost all the time. Uh, we had people sleeping over in the labs. That's a pretty standard practice. And it was a. Um, like snowball modification, we call it Snowcraft. Um, the the idea was that there'd be um, a team based, uh, class based uh, snow combat. So people were throwing snowballs, launching uh, snowballs with ice nice. in them. We were gonna have um, soda cans, as grenades, we'd shake them up and throw them. Um, one of the things we did this time that we uh, hadn't done before was a night of pre production. So actually. Um, Thursday night, we started some tutorials just to give people a refresher course or overview in the tools, um, in the you know, procedure of modeling and how to get stuff into Doom. And then we had a concept art to start the night before. We picked the game design uh, prior. We had people submit them. And uh, there's a, a link to submit them now if you submit it to uh, ATEC uh, or at CUTD. Um, yeah, we'll, at Gmail. In the show notes, we'll yeah. put all the links and. A-T-S-A dot U-T-D-A-L-L-A-S dot E-E-U. Put a little subtitle, as you mentioned. Well, we'll have it in the, the blog stuff, too. But, I mean, I, to pick up on that point, we need to... The links are important. And do you have the outcome of the game? Do you have any pictures of it? Anything yeah, that we've, we got, we've got a few things that we can probably give you. And, and on, on top of that, I have a, a capstone student who's basically finished.